Good morning. It's another early morning here in Ireland. We had quite a few storms this week, and I actually couldn't record because the wind was so loud in the chimney that uh, it was interfering with my audio setup. So it's quieter this morning, so I thought I would show you how I finished off with the Ruins mod. And we'll take a look at some of the models first that I've built to complement the existing models. So we already looked at the round tower. So this is the tower that I built with all of the construction steps or the deconstruction steps. And then we built the church, which I rather like. I think that's my favorite so far. Then I built some wall pieces. So this is a short wall. And I made several versions of this so that I could do long stretches of wall without having kind of repeating patterns. So I've got three main stretches of small short wall, and then I have one that's a taller wall. And I used the same technique to build these. First I started with a cube, and then I created a cutout, and I would gradually cut out the pieces as it got smaller. Then I worked on a Roman Colosseum, which didn't end up turning out. So this is the Colosseum that I built. I mean, in Blender, the model doesn't look too bad. I, I don't mind this model. I looked at some pictures of Colosse Roman Colosseums, and I built a, a full one, and then I cut out bits of it. It doesn't look bad, but in the game, it just does not look right. It's out of place. And if you think about it, if you were to come across a Roman Colosseum, you'd come across it in the context of a larger set of ruins. So I would need a lot more Roman ruins to kind of make this look right. And the color actually doesn't look very good in the game either. The game is, you know, these dark greens and pine trees and a very sort of northern central European feel. And the Colosseum just, it doesn't fit that context very well. I mean, obviously there were Roman ruins in northern and central Europe, but it just, it feels like it ought to be sort of in a dry Mediterranean type environment. And it, it didn't look very well in the game. So I'm going to table this one and come back to it. And then finally, I made a small tower, uh, a small square tower. I've been very busy refactoring the code and cleaning it up a lot. Uh, I ended up with only three scripts that I run to generate the ruins. So the first one is this ruin uh, component and the ruin assets. So I create the ruin component. I have some logic which allows me to progress through the ruin deconstruction, so from the tallest model down to the smallest. And then I actually register the ruins, looping through all the pieces and the stones and making sure everything is grounded, making sure things have a resource container so that the gatherers can remove the ruin. I added a new resource called Resource Ruin, which is what they gather. Then I have the registration with the building zones of each type of ruin. So different sizes of ruin require different building zones. So a circle or a rectangle, and then a different size of rectangles. I build the building salvage yard where the workers work to remove the ruins. I have the building parts within the salvage yard. I have some crates and different visuals that appear in the salvage yard for visual effect. And finally, I assemble all that together. So I have four different workers and a bunch of crates and stone and marble to represent the salvage that's being collected. Then I have a, the job itself, so the salvage worker, and I'm allowing the job to be added to all statuses up to commoner. So newcomer, serf, or commoner, but it seems like it's not the kind of status job that a citizen would work in. So I'm going to leave it there. And I also added the requirement that this job have an extraction zone so that you won't be able to gather or salvage ruins that are outside of your territory. I increased the delay so that the worker requires 30 seconds of game time in order to reduce one level of the ruin. And by the way, in the ruin itself now, it's much slower to gather. So it takes five or six visits by the salvage worker before a single visual is reduced. So if it's a wall, the worker has to come five times before the wall reduces in height. And then finally, I have the building function itself. 
So for this, I chose to go with using the building function quarry. So these ruin collectors work a little bit like a quarry. What happens is that they go to the salvage site, to the ruin, and they gather the ruin resource itself, and they produce stone. But they also have a chance in the quarry function to produce something else. In the vanilla quarries, they produce whatever the resource is and a small chance of producing gems. So in this case, my four different workers, each one has a chance of producing either iron, marble, jewelry, or gold bars. And you can see the percent chance here. So in 20% of the time, the worker will produce iron, 10% of the time they'll produce marble, 5% jewelry, and 5% gold bars. And I'm hoping that that allows the player, if they aren't interested in making large quarries, which often in my games I don't build a lot of quarries, that they could use these ruins as a source, a small source of some of these items, especially marble and gold, which are not really that useful for other things in the game at the moment. Next, we'll look at how I made collections of ruins. So this is the idea that ruins would not spawn individually, rather they would spawn in a collection. So you would see a ruined town or a ruined farm, which would consist of multiple buildings and perhaps some walls denoting old field boundaries. How I did this is that I created a single item within Blender, and I call it a collection. And within that, I have items that are just empty axes, so they're not actual items, but they're just an, a placeholder for where the, the ruin pieces will go. And I have a naming convention so that they start with item dot and then the name of the ruin itself. So this is the, the name from the Lua code that I'm registering each ruin under, and then an index number just to allow Blender to, to keep track of which ones are which. So in this case, what I have, if you look here, I have each individual dot this one, for example, represents a wall, I believe, and Ruin 3 is a wall piece. So these are all wall pieces. And this is just a small farm where you have the outer courtyard and then a couple of walls indicating where the farm buildings were. I have some larger ones as we go through. So this one is a church with a yard. So the middle Ruin is Ruin 2, which is the church. Then the outer ones are various wall pieces that represent sort of a churchyard, and then I left a space for the gate. Then I got ambitious and made a small town, different walls surrounding old courtyards and field boundaries. I have a large tower, which is the round tower that I built. Uh, I have several church pieces, and I believe this one has the square tower in a couple of places as well. So this will generate over, you can see the distances here, each, each large square is 10 meters in-game. So this is quite a large complex which will spawn in a relatively flat place and create sort of an old town layout. In order to make the ruins look realistic and not to repeat the same pieces over and over, I've introduced some code that the ruins will decay at a random rate uh, before the player sees them, so the first time that they're spawned. So for example, if it's a tower, every time the round tower spawns, it will spawn at, at a random level of decay. It could be all the way up to the highest level of, of the tower or down to the lowest. And that way, each time the round tower spawns, it looks a little bit different and doesn't appear to be identical across the board. So let's look now at how these collections play out in the game. I've started a new map and we're looking at the Great River map, which I made some time ago. And you can see the ruins have spawned on the map. So this one is a very large castle complex. So you can see the round towers in various states of decay, the small square tower, and then some walls indicating old buildings or uh, curtain walls around the castle. And you'll notice that there are gaps in the castle. What I have in the code is code that removes the ruin or prevents it from spawning if the slope is too steep. So there are castle walls in my collection during here, during this section here, but they're not spawning because the hill is too steep. This one is the little farmstead with a couple of old buildings and a small square tower, the central courtyard. Over here we have another small town, or a sort of manor complex, so it's got a central road with walls on either side, some divisions for different baileys, an old church, a square tower, and a round tower, another church over here. So you could kind of imagine that this was a, a small town center or trading post. This one here is, is a collection, so this is another sort of town collection. 
And there are a few other solitary items that spawn on their own. So this is a churchyard. So you can see the gate and the old church with the yard. I was considering putting gravestones in here, but someone reminded me that that might be kind of odd because your workers are removing the gravestones. <laughs> removing the graves, which is a little strange. And then I've got a solitary church that spawned in this little wood here. Here is another example loading from the valley map. So it was important to make sure that ruins didn't spawn on steep hillsides. So you can see there aren't any ruins on the hillsides. Um, with a map like this with very little actual buildable area, uh, you're going to have fewer ruins because it tries about 50 times for each ruin to find a place to place it. But the ruins have a proximity marker, so they're not allowed to spawn within a certain distance of each other or within a certain distance of existing buildings. In this case, then, I have my little farmstead that spawned on this hillside here. I have a town which sort of mostly didn't spawn because it spawned in an area with a, with a steep hill. So there's parts of the town, but a lot of it is missing, which is fine. And what else do I have? I have a little town here in this little valley. So this is a good example of the gameplay value of the ruins. So this area is very important for mining early in the game. I've played this map before. And obviously this area, the, the player would want a clear access to it. Because I have building zones around these ruins, if I turn the UI back on and build a village center, show you that the building zones are going to block the player from accessing all of this area, and they might block the quarry from being built. Though it doesn't completely block the player from accessing the area, but, but definitely the player would be motivated to try to remove these ruins in order to use this entire space for a quarry village. So it also, the ruins not only add some visual aspect to the game, but they also add a little bit of a necessity to think about whether you want to remove the ruin or leave it as it is, and perhaps they'll shape the development of the town in this area. Uh, then we have a round tower on its own. We've got a small castle complex, which largely didn't spawn fully because of this steep space here. Here's a little castle, spawned with three of its four towers, actually a pretty logical place for a castle, so that's nice to see. So I tried not to fill up too much of the map with ruins. Obviously you don't want to have them dominate the landscape, but I liked the fact that with these collections I can create larger sets of ruins that look kind of realistic. Here's an example from my Karabulak map, which is a very open map so you can kind of see the ruins better. There's very few trees here. It's a semi-arid area, so the grass is a lot shorter. So I've got a little farmstead here on a hill, which looks rather nice, I think. And then as you pan across the landscape, you can see a few solitary towers and a church. An old uh, stone wall. That doesn't look terribly realistic. I'm not sure people would, would prioritize that area as a farm field. And then a small town here, where you can see the layout of the old streets. A very decayed church so this is an example where the church is a lot more decayed so this is a random factor that that removed most of that church another small town here in a flat area the church in better condition on either side of the village and a few towers and lots of old houses and the street this one you can see the street running through the village and perhaps an old tower complex here a small castle. Here you can see all four towers. These are exactly the same model, but rotated randomly and in various states of decay. So it makes it appear, if you don't look close, that these are different models, which adds to the variety. You don't get that repetitive same model over and over. And then over here we have the castle complex. So this was a large complex that I made with lots of towers around the edges. In this case, because of the steepness of the terrain, some of the towers are gone which I don't think is bad because it kind of breaks up the entire visual. You can see, you can get a sense that there was a churchyard here surrounded by a curtain wall. So I'm hoping that the overall effect is not overwhelming, but gives the player a sense that they're in a place that has had habitation in the past. Um, and it will, it will just give a little bit of variety to the beginning of the game, especially when you're choosing a site. You might choose to settle near an existing ruin so that you can salvage the ruin and use some of the resources. 
or it might just add that little bit to your town. You know, if you built a town around the ruin, it might be quite interesting to have that ruin in the middle of the town, as you often do see in towns in Europe. I'll show you now how to use the salvage yard. So I'm going to add ruins to an existing map, and we'll select it, we'll edit mods, and we'll go ahead and add where the ruins mod, so that it adds to the end. The order of the ruins mod does not matter in the game mod load order. So when you add ruins to an existing game, the, the script will run once only, so it'll only run the first time that you run the mod. And what will happen is it will look to place the ruins randomly around the map, but it will avoid existing buildings. So the ruins will not spawn in the middle of your existing town, or they shouldn't interfere with any of your existing setup. So this is a map I was playing with some time ago, so you can see the town is quite extensive. I've got a main town here, and a mining village up here, and then fortification up on this hill, and a monastery being built over in this new valley here. So the ruins have spawned outside of my town, so if I look in my town, there shouldn't be any ruins here. But you can see just outside of town, quite a few ruins have spawned here, a tower. And over here by my trading post destination, there's a small town, which is rather nice. So the, the trader road, the trading road will have to reroute through this town or around it. I'm guessing that the next time the trade caravan goes out, they'll probably go walk around it this way to the tower. And over here on the hillsides, we've got a nice little ruined church in a nice spot above my wood village. We have an old farm. It's an old cattle farm. We've got a castle on a prominence over a hill. And then a large castle complex over here, more of a castle town. And then finally, a, a less fortified town in this area. So you can see that in, in ancient times, this was sort of a, a very well-populated area, but is now a, desert, a deserted ruin. So that's how collections work. I, I like the effect. I may work on some additional collections or change the existing collections that I have once I've had a chance to play with the game, but for now, I'm happy. So now I'll show you the salvage yard. So let's pick a spot for salvage now. We have this ruin here, which isn't too far from the town, so perhaps I'll build a salvage yard in this little farm complex here. So I'll turn on the UI with Control u and in my resource management tab, I have the salvage yard. So it's a, it's a rather large little space. Uh, it uh, does accommodate four workers. It requires wood, planks, tools, and cloth to build. I made it somewhat similar to the stone mason's uh, tent. So it's a tent building that requires cloth. There aren't a lot of buildings in the game that require cloth. And because this was so similar to the sort of mining mechanic, I thought this made sense. I reused the same textures from the stonemason's hut. So this is the cloth texture from the stonemason's hut, but then applied to a larger tent. And I made a small sort of a, a, a visual so that it appears that the tent is pegged out to large posts. And then within I have this assemblage, it's called in the code, where you assemble four different workplaces. So these are actually four different parts, one worker per part. And I had to do that so that I could get four different random resources that spawn when they collect the items. And I also use this to, to place these vanilla props. So crates of stone, some uh, stone slabs, marble slabs, and some crates of iron bars, just to represent the resources that are being collected from the ruin. So I'll go ahead and build that, and we'll wait for the workers to build the salvage yard.
We have four different workstations. Each one will produce stone and a chance of one of the four resources. So the first thing to do is to place an extraction zone. Just go ahead and extract this entire ruin. You could choose to extract only part of a ruin. Keep in mind that the gathering points are a little bit outside of each wall piece, so the extraction zone needs to fully cover wall pieces plus a meter or two on either side. And once we've got the extraction zone, we'll go ahead and add some workers. So there come the first workers. So you see how they work. They'll go to a position, sometimes the same position, but they'll go to a gathering position and begin to gather the resource. So they hammer away. And you won't see any visual change to the ruins until they've visited the same ruin at least five times after which the wall should reduce in height by one. Next I'm going to localize the mod, so I'm going to translate it into the normal languages that I do. For this I've built an Excel tool in which I have a little script that reads the text files of the language files and then writes the new files to the same folder. So I've copied uh, the mod to a folder on my local drive, and I'm going to he go ahead and read the English file. So I've already set up this English file. I don't know what this character is, but sometimes it appears at the beginning of my script. So this is the text file where I've defined each item within the mod. And you can see these within the localization file in English. This is the text file. So the salvage yard, the salvage worker, ruins, and the name of the function. So it's a pretty simple mod. From a translation perspective, this wouldn't be hard to translate manually, but the tool makes it much faster. So the first thing to do is I have all the languages that my mods support. So I could add more languages to this, but I thought it would be easiest just to pick uh, six or seven of the major languages. And I have a function that I've built, which uses Google Translate to look up each word in turn. It takes a little bit to run, so you can see the calculation down here. But e basically, each time the function runs in each cell, it's going out to Google Translate and getting the automatic machine translation of this English phrase. Obviously, some of these are going to be incorrect, but it's better, I suppose, than having just English in the mod. So then I'll copy that and paste values. So now I'll go through and check the translation. So I know a little bit of French, so I, but, I, but not enough to know whether this is a good translation or not. But I just checked to make sure that it did translate and that there aren't any obvious mistakes. So I'm scanning through. I do know a little bit of Russian. I wouldn't have said that that is a word salvage yard. I don't know the word for salvage. Sklad is a place to store things, so that makes sense, but we'll hope that that's a good translation. That looks okay to me. Spasatil. Hmm. That sounds a little bit religious to me, but it sounds all right. I'm sure I'll get feedback from people if I've mistranslated any of these. Fix a capitalization there. All right, the rest of these I'll leave as is. So I've got my translations, and now I have this write function. I'll write that. And what that does is in the local file. Now, if I go into, let's say, Russian. Open this. I have the translation of the mod into Russian. So that Excel file basically just constructs, deconstructs, and then constructs again these text files. So now I can copy my localization from here back to where I have the actual mod. All right, I'm ready to release. So I'm going to package up all the files. So what you do is within the mod folder itself, you don't, you don't zip the entire folder. What you do is you go into the folder itself, you select everything, control A, right click and send to compress to zip file. Give this a name based on the version number. So this is version 1.01. .01. I actually did release the mod yesterday, but I'll just demonstrate how this is done today. So 1.01. .01. Then I go back to foundation to the uh, foundation.mod.io. So this is the ruins mod. Go ahead and edit. 
files. Choose the file that I just made. Mark it with the right version and adds localization and seven items. And I always check when I do that to make sure the file size is recognizable to make sure that I uploaded the correct file. In the profile within mod.io, you also have the opportunity to list uh, a small description of the mod, which will appear in the game, and then a longer description. And we have the chance to put a cover image. So I'll show you how the cover images work. I use PowerPoint to produce these. And you can see that I kind of have a template where I have sort of a circle, which has the main image, and then I have a background image the title of the mod, and then my name, each one. Ruins is here. So I've just set this up so that I can type in whatever I want, and I have a particular font that I use, Gaudi Medieval. This is also the font that I used in the Map Markers mod. Then I basically will get a picture from screenshots that I've made, and I'll replace the picture here, and then I'll replace the picture here. And once I do that, I go to export, change file type, PNG, save as. And what I can do here is save it here and then replace, yes. And it will say, which slide do you want to export? So rather than exporting every single slide as a PNG, I'll just say just this one. And that gives me the image that I can use for my cover image. The other thing that you need to do in here is to add media. So I've added some screenshots of different ruins and the salvage yard, as well as a screenshot of what it looks like when you're able to salvage the, the non-stone resources. So that's how you release a mod. Um, and here's the final mod with the different images that I have. So the salvage yard, some various ruins a ruined town, a ruined church, and so on. So that's the ruins mod, and I'm glad to have finally finished that. And now we can look on our list in OneNote and see what is next.